Hey, Shannon, how are you doing? Great, Heather. How are you? Good. I'm great. I'm so excited to talk to you because I have actually been following you for a long time um, oh. on Sourdough Schoolhouse, and I just am really excited to talk with you. I think our listeners are going to gain a ton from this conversation. So thank you so much for being here. Absolutely. My pleasure. <laughs> so you, I want to touch on this right away because I'm from Canada and you're in Canada. And whereabouts in Canada are you? I am in uh, Kelowna, BC, which is in the Okanagan Valley, which is basically Canada's wine country. Um, you know, a lot of people think it's just like igloos in Canada, but we have hot summers and beautiful beaches and vineyards for as far as the eye can see. It's beautiful. Yeah, in that part of Canada, I should say, not in, <laughs> not in all of Canada. <laughs> that sounds absolutely beautiful. I've never been there, but I'm dying to go. Well, you can come visit anytime. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. So how long, tell us your sourdough story. How did you first find out about sourdough? How did you start baking? A, kind of a funny story, actually. Food has been, uh, food is one of those things in my family for as long as I can remember, food has been important. And I, you know, I remember from a young age, my grandma and my mom talking about owning a bakery or a coffee shop or something like that. And those um, thoughts always like really sit, sat well with me. I'm like, oh man, that would be so amazing. Um, I went to university and I ended up going down a path for, for business and went into the banking world. But I always had this love for, for food, um, not really baking, if I'm really honest with you. Um, I love to cook, but I really didn't like to bake. And even if, even today, if you ask my kids, like, is there a cookie around the house or like the odd, like uh, blueberry muffin? No, <laughs> it does. if it's not, it's not bread, it's really not being made. Um, I love the, I love the little bits of work over long periods of time with sourdough. I feel like you don't have to babysit it. You don't have to like, you don't have to accomplish the task in one sitting. And uh, I think that fits really well into my life. Um, so I actually got into sourdough after being on a paleo diet. Uh, so my hubby came home from a CrossFit gym one day and he's like, I'm going paleo. And I'm like, number one, what is that? <laughs> number two, I'm the cook. Should you like, should you maybe, you know, enlighten me a little bit? Yeah. Um, and I, I, I love to learn. It's one of those things. I think, especially as you get older, you realize that learning journey never stops. And so um, I, I kind of jumped in with both feet with the paleo diet. I had some stomach issues myself. And so over about a five-year period being paleo, I was trying to recreate bread as every person who's paleo does, right? You know, mm -hmm. coconut mm -hmm. bread, almond flour bread, some combination of whatever. Um, and in the process, I had learned about sourdough. And so, or, I, or this, this bread I was making, it seemed like sourdough. And so I was like, if it seems like sourdough, I wonder if you could make it. So I tried fermenting coconut. I tried fermenting oats. I tried fermenting all, not oats, other, other things, for, uh, various things. And I kept making just creative little science experiments, really, of like little experiments of mold. And uh, finally, I took this bread from, it was a dough ball of a coconut bread that looked like sourdough. I took it to a friend of mine who was a sourdough baker. And I said, Monica, my dear, take this little ball of dough and you should analyze it and you should create it because you could make gazillions of dollars with this coconut bread that all the paleo people would love. And she said, Shannon, my dear, I have no interest in that because sourdough is very healthy for you due to the magical properties of fermentation. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> uh, like, I honestly, it was like, the, I, I felt like such kind of such a, like a fool in a sense, because here I was telling her how to do her business and how she could do really well when I had no knowledge that she already knew what she was doing and why she was doing it. She, she went and got me a book. Um, she said, Shannon, go read this about sourdough. Um, this little fermentation thing she goes, and then maybe we'll talk some other time. And so sure enough, I took that, that little book home. I started reading about the magical properties of fermentation, how it's easier on your stomach for digestion, how it, you know, eliminates phytic acid in your food. It reduces gluten substantially. And it's just so much easier for people to eat. And I was so hooked because I love working with dough. You know, the minute you started to get your hands into dough, I was like, you know, people would say, oh, that was really good, like for an almond flour cookie, or that was really good for coconut, whatever. I'm like, shut the front door, stop that. It doesn't need to be good for anything. I want it to be good because it's good. Yeah. I want it to be good because what I made was good, not because I eliminated something that wasn't needed to be eliminated. And honestly, from the minute I learned that and learned about fermentation, I just became so hooked. And I would just bake and bake and bake and bake and bake and bake and bake and, bake, um, and try to convert absolutely anything I could think of into uh, sourdough. And I have, I haven't slowed down. 
So you were making like sourdough discard recipes, making bread, all like all of the sourdough things. No, well, not. A, I don't actually love making sourdough discard recipes that much because that's more like baking to me. Oh, those right. are more, you know, your quick breads, your your muffins, your cookies. I don't make a lot of that. And um, if for those of you who know me, I do I do give a lot of sourdough discard recipes because that's what a lot of students want. Um, me myself, I don't actually create a lot of sourdough discard because I just I make it and I use it and I make it and I use it because I'm such a prolific. Uh, baker there's mm -hmm. not a lot left over um and so you know that depending on what you're looking for you just sourdough does not need to create much discard but yes th th those do exist for sure yeah oh that's awesome so you yeah. have you came out you, you came upon it honestly you know yeah. you had no idea and then literally your friend opened your eyes and then so how did you get from starting out with baking sourdough to to learning that you love to teach about sourdough Oh, great question. So that is, uh, again, I think that goes back to sort of my love of food. So I, I come from a family of four, so two brothers and a sister. Um, and I, like I said, there's a lot of people who love food. My entire family cooks. My brother cooks. My sister loves to cook. My older brother used to cook, but now he's kind of outgrown that and got new hobbies. But we all, we just loved cooking. And so um, when I got into sourdough and the wanting to learn, what was your question again? You said, you said, how, what was the how did you, how did you transition from learning to bake okay, sourdough to, to teaching? Like, right. Okay. So out? always coming around the table and, and food and stuff. So my husband and I actually, this is where it's, this is where it all started the teaching of it. Um, it was our 17 year wedding anniversary. So that was a while ago. Cause we're coming up on 24 and uh, we went to Vancouver for a, a nice little weekend and we went to this place called the dirty apron, uh, cooking school. And so when you went to this particular cooking school, you would show up, you and your spouse or a friend or whatever group of people, you would have a chef instructor teach you how to make your meal. You'd go make it all together at these various stations and you'd come and eat together around a big table. I that sounds amazing. I loved it. I wow. loved it. it. I said to Scott best date in 17 years, like bar none best date. I loved the um, the instruction. And then of course, trying to do better. So as you're making your meal, you're trying to get, you know, I'm going to make it just exactly like the chef did. And then when you came together with this group of people at a table, random strangers, whatnot, I'm an extreme extrovert, extreme extrovert. Um, so to me, it was like, it, it just checked all the boxes. And so I said to Scott, when we went home, I said, I want to do that, but I want to do it with sourdough. And initially I had thought, I would teach live classes like that. And I did for about a year and a half. I taught out of my home. We would do six to seven people at a time. Wow. And it was like the whole day. We would spend the whole day together. We would make lunch together. We would, um, cause there's, as you know, there's lots of waiting periods with sourdough. Mm -hmm. And then I would send them home with their homework to bake their loaves and whatnot. Um, it was a ton of fun. It was a ton of work. It was, you know, in you having those people in your house. And I had, I had, uh, my kids would have been, how old are they now? They would have been like 10, nine and seven at the time. And so, you know, they, they would be at school, but then I'd be rushing to clean up my house prior to picking them up. It was a bit hairy. Yeah. And um, <laughs> my husband, he, he actually does online training as well in a different industry. He was like, and I, I also on the weekends, I'd be getting like gazillion texts and a gazillion emails of how to do this. And what, what was this? And I can't remember what you said about this. And I would literally just be sitting there responding continuously. And he goes, honey, you need video training because they need to be able to watch and rewatch. And he goes, you need an online community because, you know, what you're teaching, there are so many people out there and, you know, you're going to kind of, at some point, you're, this, our little town here may not be big enough to sustain it. And I was like, you know, you're so right, because if I had these, an online teaching school, they could, you know, they could source the information, we could organize it for them and we could really help them have more success. And I could refer them back to videos and whatnot. And like, you know, they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, a video is worth like 10,000. And so I, I, I loved that whole concept and I sort of just followed in his footsteps and how he teaches his students and just transitioned it into that same, that I always want that same experience that I had when I went to the Dirty Apron cooking school. I want people to be, to enjoy themselves. I want them to be like, wow, this is, I can do this. And that there's a lot of fun in the process. Um, I think one of the biggest, one of the biggest gifts I think Sourdough gave me was the art side of it. You know, I went into it for the health reasons and then as you start baking things, it's so beautiful. Like the various shapes you can make, bread scoring is beautiful, different, adding different inclusions, even the ways in which you bake it, you know, lighter colored or dark colored, there is so much art to it. And that's, I think one of the things that are like with our online community, they, 
they get to bring their their hands so you get to you know, get to get dirty and then you get to bring that artistic flair you can add in your flavor profiles and whatnot and we i think we we get we managed to get that same feeling of coming together in the comforts of your own home yeah and then you know go through covid and it could not have been a better time because you know just for mental health alone to have something to distract you or to enrich your life when you can't do much else. Was yeah, awesome. that's amazing. I, I heard from so many people during COVID that like, of course, that they, there's the COVID sourdough bakers, right? There's probably a ton yeah. of them listening right now and they're probably laughing. And I mean, we love them because that's like, what a time to find something that you could throw yourself into. Holy. And I, I would hear from them saying like sourdough got me through this really hard time. So I can imagine sourdough combined with your community would have been amazing. Can you, can you talk about a little bit about your community and what, what that's been like? I honestly, I never, ever even thought about a community. I know like you, if you go onto any, you know, any learning, any kind of online training or whatnot, they always talk about, make sure you build a good community. I was always like, I don't understand what you're talking about. I'm not somebody who has been like an avid Facebook grouper or someone who really, you know, jumps in, into those groups or forums or any of that kind of stuff. I just, I just didn't. And so when my community started to be built, I, I was, I was literally so touched that you can be in all places of the world, all different time zones, all different cultures and backgrounds and different languages even. Um, and you can come together with one common interest of sourdough and then just the desire to encourage one another. Um, it's been, it's, it's like such, it, like the, the, so there's the artistic gift of sourdough, but this community gift has been so beautiful because I, I didn't expect it. I just, I just didn't think people would care so much about each other and helping one another and just that positive vibe. I mean, like what's negative about bread? Like yeah. at the end of the day, seriously, like if your bread went flat or if you didn't have all the bubbles in it that you wanted to, or maybe you baked it a little bit too light where who knows, like really it's not a negative process. If any mistake is just an opportunity to learn. Um, and I would say probably as you would know, most of the beautiful things that are baked kind of originated from a mistake, you know, like yes. there's, it's so, it's so cool how your mistakes can become an absolute genius. And I think that that is really, really cool. So yeah, the community was just something that I didn't expect because I've never really been involved in many um, online communities and it's, it's really quite neat. And the desire, I think, to improve. That is um, another one of the things I often say to my students all the time. It's, um, it's progress, not perfection. Mm -hmm. Like with bread, I don't like, I, I don't even think like people will say to me, how do you know when it's perfectly proofed? I'm like, you don't. Yeah. You don't know when it's perfectly proofed. You actually don't 100% know when it's perfectly proofed until you take it out of the oven, you cut into it and you can examine it. And you know what? I don't care. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We can, we can test it. We can do the finger poke test, yeah. check from, but it's not a hundred percent. It's just, it's not a hundred percent. And some no. days, you know, some days, um, like some days it's your bake is better than others. And for me, I, I can probably think that, you know, if I'm paying more attention to it during the day, but if I'm kind of like, you know, get it ready and you kind of set it and forget it and you go about your day and maybe you're off on a turn or you're off on your shaping timelines or you're off on how long you proved it for, you weren't paying attention to temperature or who knows what. <laughs> um, there are some days when it doesn't turn out as good as maybe you'd hope for, but you know, it's still amazing. Homemade bread, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Yeah, I know you're putting homemade bread on your table for your family. Like what could possibly yeah. be better than that? So, and that's, I think the best thing too, is remind, remind people when they're, when they're, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're a COVID sourdough baker, or if you're a hobby sourdough baker, and maybe you're one, somebody who really is achieve, looking to achieve that, that beautiful, perfect crust or the beautiful, perfect crumb or a certain scoring pattern or whatever, if you're really hard on yourself about getting that perfect thing is that's, it's fine to have goals to achieve something like that, but just remind yourself at the end of the day, you're feeding your family. And I, I have made a ton of bread. I've given away a ton of bread. I've never had anybody cut open the crumb and say, Oh, it could have been more open. Right. Like, I, you know, people are just like, most people say, I, you know, I, I'll say to them, Hey, here's a loaf of bread. If you could wait till you get home before you start cutting into it, that'd be awesome. Cause it's just right out of the oven. Most people will text me and say, I actually, we couldn't wait. And we ripped it apart with our fingers in the car. And it's like, <laughs> it's all over the car. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's amazing. <laughs> and it's amazing. And they didn't even look at the crumb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what, I mean, kind of going along that same tangent, um, talking about, you know, the, the pursuit of perfection and whatnot. Um, I think my listeners know that I 
kind of touch on this with social media sometimes, but um, I think, I think, uh, so I call them sourdough fluencers. It's this like word that I thought of one day and I was like, that's so cute. Cause it's like sourdough influencer. I think there is a really great time and place for that, um, for ins inspiration, um, for inspiring new bakers and also showing them too what they, what they're capable of and like what, it, what else is out there and what they can shoot for. Um, so you, you, are there any kind of sourdough fluencers that you kind of work with or that you talk with? Um, I do, I, 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 I go online and there's, I would say there'd be a handful of, of people that have, you know, been doing sourdough on Instagram since, since I started. And I would say it's a really nice group of people that I, um, c communicate with. I don't, I don't spend a lot of time with, with them. Like it, it's, it's pretty, um, shallow is not the right word, but you know, I, I have, I have three kids and I, I run a business full time and, yeah. um, I don't have a lot of time to do it, but I find I, like you just said, going on Instagram and seeing some of the things people are doing, it is inspiring. And somebody will see something and you'd be like, Oh my word. Like, and I love inspiration. My husband and I go out for dates usually every week or even twice a week. Cause our kids are a little older now. Um, we, and we go to a handful of restaurants and kind of in rotation. And he always reminds me like when, when we get there, it's like, I need to be inspired. I like, he jokes that I'm like a homeschool kid here. Cause I like, I'm, I live, I work at home and I, I don't get to have all of the people in my life all the time. He's like, some days it's like, you just need to get out. Cause like, you just haven't been, you have not yeah. had enough interaction yet. Nothing wrong with homeschool kids, but we all know, you know, if you have a group of kids and if they haven't been with other kids lately, they kind of go crazy. And that's what, that's what happens to me. Yeah. And, and so, especially um, you're, you're such an extrovert too. Like you need oh, your yeah. social cup filled. Totally. So we yeah. go out, but we go out because I need the interaction, but then we, we get to restaurants and I, I, when, the, when the food comes to me, I'm so inspired by what I see. So sometimes it's a presentation, sometimes it's a flavor combination. Sometimes, sometimes it could just be like pizza or even a burger, but it's nice to see how somebody else has done it. And that's how I look at Instagram. I don't need to go home and make that exact replica of that meal, but, or it, when I see something on Instagram, I, but I look at it and I'd be like, Oh my word, they just knocked it out of the park as far as beauty or um, creativity or who knows what, right. maybe they have like, I'll see certain scoring patterns. Um, and I'm like, Oh my goodness. Like th I, I know how long that would have taken. And I, I look at it and I'm like in awe and, and of their symmetry too. It's like, Oh my goodness. Like they, they just got every line, just the right depth and the right length. And wow. And I can be in awe of it, but I have to remind myself, you know, I have to look at like my reality for that day for baking, for whatever I'm doing and say, you know, that's not going to be me. Yeah, I'm going right. to, I'm going to admire that. And I'm going to give them kudos where it's, where, where it's deserved. Yeah. Um, but you have to like, look at them and sometimes, sometimes like you're looking at, looking at some baking, it's like they made one loaf of bread and they babysat it all day long. And the attention, true. the time they took to make that one loaf of bread, I don't have that much time. If they do good for them. Yeah. You know, but it doesn't mean you have to do it, which means you will not get the same results. So give yourself a break. Just yes. Thank you. That's the biggest thing. It's like, I don't, I don't hate social media. I really don't, but, it, and I, I find it hard to verbalize my feelings about it. And I feel like you just summed it up beautifully. Good. It's like, yes, look at it for inspiration, but we don't always need to achieve it. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's a huge take home. I think. Awesome. Yeah. 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 It, yeah, I, so, I agree with you when it comes to social media. It's like we, you can't compare, you know, your results. You have to look at, com compare the whole story, compare your, compare your lives, compare your, 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 your demographic, compare your busyness, compare your commute to work or back. Who, like, who knows? You got to compare the whole circumstance before you can judge yourself so harshly if you don't get the same results. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. And so how do you, how do you learn new things as a, uh, you know, as a baker, as a business owner, as a teacher, like where do you discover new ideas and new inspiration? Well, initially, like I said, when I first got into sourdough, I just wanted to recreate everything that I ever had. So I, I look at food memories first. So food memories are, they run deep in me. So I think about 
um, you know, we've got Easter coming up. And so that's, that's like hot cross buns. Uh, that is, you know, that, that turkey in my family, like big Easter egg hunts. And so I have so many memories around that. So, you know, with that season, I'm going to want to make hot cross buns. So I would do that. I would go into sort of your Christmas season and be starting to think about, oh, what would I want to have? So, you know, maybe we'd be going to more parties. So there might be some like appetizers or things like that. So then you would maybe make some buns and fun shapes or whatnot. Um, you can look like, I always look to food memories first. My grandma made the best soft buns that you could ever imagine. And so then I will just look to the, those yeasted recipes and try to convert them into sourdough. That's where it all stems from for me as a food memory. Then when it comes to inspiration now with my community, you know, I only have the food memories I have, you know, the years I had, I, I don't have a lot of like deep heritage for any particular culture. Um, we're kind of a mix where we've been, we've been in Canada a very long time and I'm from Northern BC, which means we're not even that culture at all. <laughs> and, uh, and so I am inspired by my students. So students will come to me and say, Hey, my grandma used to make this. Here's what it looked like. I'll, and I'll often say to them, Hey, do you have a grandma's recipe? And then I'll kind of work backwards, trying to recreate that with their help. So um, I ask for a lot of inspiration. And yes, of course, social media. Yeah, I'm going to see certain things. Certain things are going to catch my eye. I'm going to be like, I'm trying that. Yep. They're mm -hmm. just because I saw somebody's scoring this weekend and she tagged me in it. Um, and I was just like, <laughs> Wow. And, you know, I don't, I don't always score intricately on my bread because sometimes I just not, that's not the point. Um, mm. But I do love it. I do love taking that little bit of time when I have it. Yeah, same. I feel like for me, it's all about efficiency. Like you, <laughs> you mentioned like you have three kids, right? And you said, yeah. you know, they're older, so we can do date nights twice a week. And I was thinking, oh, what's that going to be like? Because I, oh, I have three kids beautiful. under five. Yes, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> like, that ain't happening anytime soon for me. How um, are kids? <laughs> Uh, they're all under five. I have three of them. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I was there. I was there. <laughs> it's busy. It's a lot. It's very um, busy. I, yeah, I love it. But so for me, it's like all about efficiency. So same, yes. you know, I'll, I'll be doing, I do three loaves at a time and sometimes I can do like a semi pretty score. And then other times it's just a matter of like, we're going to do three ears and call it a day. Like I, I simply don't have time to do that beautiful score. Um, but I really wish I could. And I love looking at it. <laughs> I know. And so that's the thing is, I mean, that's why I'm so grateful for like all of the different personalities that we all possess and the different skills we possess, because, you know, some things that might be annoying to me in one sense, are I'm actually really glad other people have because it teaches me something else. So yeah. I, you know, like I, we, we just, we all get, have our, have our certain things where we're like, you know, that is important to me and I'm going to do that. Um, but we can't judge ourselves when it's not important to us, you know, just admire that beauty in somebody else and let yeah. them do it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I love that. I love that. And so that's, I mean, those are true, like words from a teacher. You've, yeah. taught, a, you've taught a ton of people, um, over the years. What do you find is the most helpful, like either like one tip or just piece of advice for, for beginner bakers when they're starting out? Oh, um, when you start breaking out, um, start baking, I, my biggest thing is honestly, just to be kind to yourself, just, you know, just take it, recognize in anything, there's a learning curve in absolutely anything. Um, a lot of people will say sourdough like, oh my goodness. It's like, it takes days. I'm like, but it's like, 30 yeah. seconds here and two minutes there. And, you know, if, if you're like, I, uh, I, I, I'm, I am home a lot because I work from home. Um, I, I hike a lot. I went for a hike this morning. Um, I, I, I'm going to get outside with my dogs this afternoon. I really do love, and I gotta go pick up kids from school and I'm going to take one to a sport. Um, and I am making bread today and I, I've, re I've moved recently and I haven't made a lot of bread lately because I've been setting up my space and whatnot. And, um, I love that I can you know, just do a little bit of work and then come back to it and whatnot. So when you're a new baker, you want to like, if you're just, if you really want to learn sourdough, if you want it to fit into your life, it has to fit into your life. So you got to take that little learning curve, you know, and kind of go, okay, I don't know anything right now. So the best advice is to just do it. Find a recipe, find a method that works for you. That kind of like, when you read it, you're like, yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I could, I could do that. If you, if you find a recipe and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't, I don't even know what she's talking about. I, I oh my word. If you're, if you're feeling that it's never going to be easy for you. So find something you, somebody you connect with, um, and then follow their process, like to a T 
follow it to a T, don't veer off of it and do that a few times. And then you'll start to realize like, oh, look at that. So it's a little bit of work here and then I had all this time. And then it was a little bit of work here and I had all this time. And then it was like, I popped it in the fridge and then I baked it a couple of days later or whatever. You can really find ways to fit it into your life. So if you're new, follow a process and be kind to yourself. That's great. Yeah. 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 Just be, yeah. Be nice to you. Like, would you say those things to another baker? Probably not. So don't say them to yourself. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And you're going to learn. And that, um, my father-in-law is an avid golfer golfer. He loves to play golf. And from what my husband says is he doesn't really get any better (laughs) over the years, but every golfer, I hear that, that they're like, Oh, I had the best game today. And, and then, then the next day they're like, Oh, it was terrible. And I was, it was all over the place. You know, baking can be like that too. You know, you can have a really awesome day and then you can have a bust in the next bake, but it's a matter of being like, does it draw you back? Do right. you love it enough? I love it. I absolutely, I, I'm a pretty, you might notice I'm a fairly high energy person, pretty intense. I am a yeller. I am a yeller. This is, this is, <laughs> yeah, this settle is a- down Shannon. <laughs> totally. It's I, I can be, I am never more peaceful than when I'm baking. Oh, that's it so is, great. It's something that it, it, it calms me down at a, like at a core level that nothing else does. And I find like, I can just get lost in the process. And I love that. And so I find like for, for students of mine, I have a lot of students that, that have to, that to feel the same way. And I love that you can have something that is beautiful, artistic, meditative, um, a challenge, uh, and, and, and you can feed your family at the end of the day. Right. There's so many hobbies. Like I, I, I'm a, I'm very, very practical at the core of myself. Like, and so there's so many hobbies that you could do that maybe would give you all of those things, beauty, art, um, learning challenge. Then that you can, then you got to come home and make dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I kind of, I honestly, for, for me, sourdough is like the perfect hobby. It's perfect. Yeah. I feel, I feel the exact same way. It's so funny. And, um, my husband's always after me, like, when are you going to bake sourdough? I married a baker. Why isn't there any bread? <laughs> like, well, the days that I make sourdough, the house actually starts to fall apart. So, you know, and, and then, so I've actually figured out a way over the years to like, you make the sourdough and you can still do all of the things, just like you were yeah. saying, like you fold your dough and then you go and fold two loads, of, loads of laundry. And you come and back you and fold your dough kids. Yeah, yeah. And you can like take the kids out back for half an hour and come in, fold your dough and make snacks. You know, it's so, so doable and it's so flexible. And also if you, if you do mess it up, it's really forgiving and it usually tends to work anyway. I almost, so. all my students, if they, if they're like, what do I do? I think I overproof my dough. I'm like, make pizza. Just, yeah. I said, it might not be your best pizza ever, but it's going to be great. Yeah. You know, it's probably still better than the, you know, the $5 pickup pizza or whatever you're going to get from down the street. So you can, you can, I, like I do say to students, never throw out dough. Yes. Never Same. walk through the whole process. If you started it, you finish it. Yeah. Period. And even there's been a couple of times too, especially when I was starting out that I thought this is going to be a throwaway. This yeah. is going to be terrible, but whatever, I'm just going to bake it anyway. And it came out and it was beautiful. And, and what was, did you learn? A I, lot. Yeah, a ton. And I, well, the biggest thing I learned was to never throw it away. Um, yeah. And so it, you just never know if it's going to work or not. You don't. You really, really don't. And even for me, I've been doing this for years and years, too. And I say, I think I've mentioned this before, but you pull the, the Dutch oven out of the oven and you lift the lid off. And at that moment, I'm like crossing my fingers still. Every time. Every, Every time. time I'm like, oh, yeah. it's going to be terrible. And, you know, it's usually not. Yeah. But sometimes, you know. You have a bad, the, bad baking I'd day. I'd say so. most of us think that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You pull the lid off and it's like, well, fingers crossed. <laughs> so, so in your experience, awesome. do you feel like people, especially new, new bakers, but also intermediate bakers who are kind of looking for more inspiration and different types of challenges and stuff, do you find that your students kind of learn best in the community setting or from the workshop setting? Or is it kind oh. of like a mix of both? I, I would say they learned from the workshops. So, so we started doing, we started a membership um, a little over a year ago. And so where we, we have nine workshops a, a, in a year, um, and then we do a few extra clinics outside of that. Um, and we do have sort of like weekly bake alongs that 
that connect with our courses within our membership. And our students love the workshops. They just love them. So we do those live every month. And then of course you can watch the replay whenever you want to, or nine times a year, not every month. But um, it's a time where what I love is I, I, I know a lot of my students now. So when I get on those calls, I'll be like, oh, you know, Francis, thanks for coming out. Bonnie, love seeing your face on here. Kathy, wait, like, thanks for showing up. And then they they are in the chat with others, with new students. They're, they're, you know, talking about some of their favorite things or some of the, some of their learnings or when, when they switched from like, you know, uh, kind of learning sourdough to loving sourdough. Like we, we talk about sort of like, like there's a, there's a sort of stage of like, start it, um, learn it, love it, live it. Uh, there's, there's another one in there, but I can't remember. And so living it is where you, you just know how to fit it into your life. You right. just, you just, go about your day and sour, like my family never thinks I'm making sourdough and I'm always making sourdough. <laughs> like they really don't, they really don't notice because it's just like, I'll shape them at this point, leave them a bacon when I'm baking, making dinner or who knows what it's just, it's just a, an ebb and flow in my life. Mm -hmm. um, although today I actually, I bought bread today because I've been moving and, and I, I literally don't even have like a crust left. Like we ate every last little crust that was sitting in the freezer, which you must know that they add up, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, <laughs> You're like, I'm either making a, a strata or, or like, we're just eating these crusts because it's all that we have. My kids this morning, they were like, can you make bagels, um, soft sandwich bread and buns like, like ASAP? Like they're like, get on with it, mom. Like we are running out of food. <laughs> yeah. They don't notice when you're making it, but they do notice when you don't make it. <laughs> That's for sure. For sure. Um, so, so you're the intermediate bakers. I would say every person learns, um, well in different ways and you know even if you you could be an advanced baker you could be brand new and the workshops you'll just you'll just hear what you're ready to hear you know and as you get better you'll hear something new and you'll be like oh my gosh how did i miss that interesting and, and sometimes i'll end up with a really experienced baker and they'll say to me hey shannon some for whatever reason my sourdough is just not working right now i'll be like go back to the basics mm -hmm. go back to the basics you've probably learned some bad habits you've probably gotten a little too comfortable um, or maybe you're getting a little neglectful of your starter. There could be, a, it could be a change in season. You know, I'll, I'll just say, go back to the basics and start tracking your process, tr tracking temperatures and timelines. Um, and I, I, I'm like, I guarantee you, you'll get right back on track. Yeah. And, you know, it just, we all ebb and flow through our lives and through our crafts or hobbies or whatever, um, it, different, different times. And sometimes we all just need a little, you know, go back to the basics. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think that applies pretty much to every hobby out there and every, totally. <laughs> every activity out there. So totally. I love to ask this question. Um, and I, it's, it's kind of a two-part question for you because as a personal sourdough baker and as a teacher, so as a personal sourdough baker, would you have done anything differently? If you could go back, would you change anything along your path? In just my own baking? Yeah. No, not a, not a drop. I'm, I, uh, I'm not very, I always think about the future. So to me, I'm always just excited about what will be. Um, and I think everything that you've done in the past is just a, uh, it's just, a, it's just, it's just like, you, it's necessary to get to where you're going. And so I don't look back with regrets. I would say maybe the only thing I could think of is uh, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So when I first started sourdough, um, it wasn't nearly as, popular online as it is now. I mean, I, I already think sourdough was kind of making a trend over the last 20 years um, in more in the bakery settings, like uh, micro bakeries, you know, cottage bakeries, all kinds of things. They were making a comeback in that regard. But now it is, um, I mean, just so many people, yeah, anybody can make sourdough. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's all, awesome. I love that, but I didn't know what I didn't know. And I actually think that was beautiful. So I, and I didn't have any expectation of what the crumb should look like or what the color should look like. I just, I just made it for myself. And so that was kind of cool, I think. Um, so I don't regret that I didn't know what I didn't know, but um, I probably could have shortened my learning curve by learning from somebody else. I just didn't know who to learn from. Right. So I, there I really, weren't as many resources out there, right? No, I was like, grab a cookbook mm -hmm. and you, and, and kind of try to learn it yourself. So you do have to just do it, but I like, it depends on what your goals are. So if you really want to like, if you really want to like knock sourdough out of the park, like in your first couple of bakes, find a good teacher and follow them and do what they say. Yeah. <laughs> like, like I all have students that'll say to me, Shannon, I followed your recipe to a T except for I did this, 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 and this. And I'll be like, 
what kind of tea are you talking about? <laughs> the lowercase T. <tea. laughs> yeah, because you just made your own recipe, darling. And I'm totally yeah. fine with that. That's great. Good for you. But you're not going to be able to get the exact same results from my recipe if you don't actually follow it. So um, find, you figure out what you stand for. So, you know, if you are going to be like, I am 100% whole grain sourdough baker, never shall I do it. I'm going to mill my, I'm going to grow my own grain and mill my own grain and whatever else. Okay, then you're going to have to learn a whole different system than what I teach. You know, if you want to learn how to um, make really cool recipes um, using primarily the flour you have access to, um, because I, I, I talk to people about that too, is like, you have to learn how to bake with what you have access to. I never, I will never be like the person who's ordering in flour and spending $70 on shipping. So I can try this variety at this protein content or whatever. I'm going to, I'm going to use the flour I can get readily in my community because it's expensive otherwise. Yes. And I don't, if, if I, if my, like right now my bread, I, I, I use organic flour. It costs me about 82 cents a loaf is roughly what I figured out. If I, if it's going to cost me three or $4 a loaf, I'm going to buy it. Like, <laughs> good point. Like, good come point. on. Right. Yeah. So, you know, think about what that that's my, that's, but that's my value. But if your value is you need to grow it, mill it the whole nine yards, and you're going to commit to that process, fill your boots. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. But then you have to find somebody who also has that same philosophy so that they can help you along your journey, or you're going to waste so much time trying to get something that, 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 like, I always say to people, like, I am not a, like, I'm not a big, for me, bread does not need to be, um, hundred percent whole grain for me. That's, I, I like the fermentation of, of sourdough. I, I do primarily use white flowers in most of my baking and pastries. Um, I will add in flowers for flavor, for flavor and for fiber. But what I often will say to people is bread is not my main source in my diet. So right. like right. if I want to have a good piece of bread, I'm going to have it with a salad. So there's my fiber and there's all my nutrition there. I, I don't eat so much bread that it needs to be my fiber and my nutrition, the whole nine yards. The bread is sort of an extra in my diet. Um, so if you, of course, if bread is going to become your main thing, then you, of course, you're going to be wanting to make it more highly nutritionally rich. Um, but I, I, I'm almost always going for flavor and, uh, rise and texture more than I am for whole grains and freshly milled, but that's my personal preference. And that's a good point too, for people who are listening, you know, you need to find a teacher who aligns with your core values and your preferences too. Because there are, again, again, kind of touching on the social media aspect of it, you know, there are some things that I see that I think, like, you know, how do you have time for that? Or why, you know, maybe I, want, I wonder what the reason was for doing that, because I wouldn't have done it that way. And then obviously, like, my values don't align with theirs. So if yeah. I'm a beginner student, that wouldn't be a good person to learn from. So that's a really good point for, for people out there who are trying to learn. Yeah, totally. Because yeah. Then, then what happens is you'll find that you're compromising your values to please a teacher or a group that you don't actually align with. And that just ends up being frustrating. And then, and then you're going to, somebody's going to come out blaming, pointing fingers at somebody. And every time I've pointed fingers at somebody else, I tend to end up just feeling lousy about myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have to, we have to just, if you know what you stand for, like if you, or what, what is important in your family and your values and how you eat and how you feed people, um, then, then you can be more realistic in the results as well. Like, um, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm kind of a stickler for the rules when it comes to recipes. So when I, when somebody says to me, oh, this is a whole grain, blah, blah, blah. And then you look at the recipe and there's actually only 8% whole grain in it. I'm a little bit going like fraud. I like, I like immediately, that's where my head immediately goes. And I have to be like, settle down, yeah. settle down, Shannon. Like they, they, that's they're I, not. I do the same to the sourdoughs that you can buy. <laughs> yes right i'm like yes, I sourdough, any sourdough in this whatsoever but yeah okay yeah <laughs> totally my dad actually one day my dad a uh, funny man he he likes um he likes just plain like white like wonder bread kind of bread but he buys sourdough a boule from the superstore in here in Kelowna, and he loves it he likes how soft it's he goes and it lasts forever and i'm like well there's a reason for that dad. Um, and so he brought it to me one day. He just literally showed up on my step and he pat, he like kind of shoved the bag in my face. And he's like, tell me what's wrong with this, Shannon. I'm like, well, number one, I never told you anything's wrong with it. It's not sourdough and it's not what I make, but do whatever you want to do, dad, that's fine. Right. And so I, I said to him, first thing is, this, is the 52 ingredients on the list here. That's, 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 that's all I got. Yeah. And I did it back like, to him. Yeah. Case in point. But, but, but you know what, if you want to eat it, go nuts. 
I'm not okay. judging you. I don't care, but let's, let's call it what it is, right? Let's call it what it is. That's it. That's the thing for me too. Yeah. Um, and then, so second, second part too, of this question as a teacher and also business owner, I guess they kind of tie in together. Would you do anything differently looking back? Or do you kind of take the same approach? Like no regrets. Let's just move forward. Uh, yeah, totally. I am like literally. I, 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 to keep me thinking about the past or even the present. I, sometimes I got to work on just being present. I am always, always thinking about what's next and what's to come, and that that like it, it excites me so much. Um, I've been a business owner for forever. Um, yeah, I was I was a banker for the first couple of years out of university. Um, and then I became a mortgage broker and then I had kids and my husband took over that business. And um, when I got into sourdough, it was, it was all about teaching people how to do it mainly for their own health benefits and just to, to let them know that they can do it. So um, I have, I have learned so much along the way. Um, when I first started teaching sourdough, I didn't know you could actually bake sourdough from cold. I did not know that. I, so I was, I had, I was already teaching courses live. I, I, so, but the, like, that's for me, like, um, my one girlfriend always says to me, Shannon, you're all about prolific rather than per perfect. And so she said, you just, you just go, you just like, you just go. And so I don't mind making mistakes along the way. Cause I find that that's where you really figure out who you are. Mm -hmm. You have to just go in there and be like, okay, what, what do I stand for? What do I love to do? What do I not love to do? What do I love about this? What do I not just always like analyzing the results of what you've done, but you got to do something first. So, um, I could have probably been a little bit more, um, book smart when it came to to sourdough when I first started teaching it was a lot of about by feel and my own personal kind of hobby that I was just sharing with people mm -hmm. but you know that's all I was that's all I was trying to do so then when I moved it on to on when I moved into online teaching and we have you know we still have students in over 17 different countries and you know they're all over the world and now I have to I have to deal with questions about you know high humidity or altitudes or you know why is my star doing this or what is this I like um now I have to really analyze more questions and more baking experiences than just my own. I have to, like, I, it's a much bigger perspective. So I spend a lot of time researching questions from people or research. Like when I do a workshop before, when I used to do a workshop, it was kind of for me, it was sort of like, you know, this is what my family makes. This is what we like. This is how it goes. Now I'm going to have to be like, okay, what would this be like if, you know, they're in this place and their flowers, a different quantity. So what can I do to help them if they're struggling at the moment? So there's a lot more that goes into it now. Right. So as a teacher, I just, it's a lot of research. So I find, um, I don't just, I can't be as flippant about my baking as I, in, when I teach as I, as I can at home, you know, my students, I may not care if my crumb is perfect, but I have students who do care mm -hmm. That's and I right. need to respect that for them and, and do my very best to help them get the results that they want. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. And, and considering different climates too, that's huge. Humidity, yes. heat, cold altitude. Oh, it's, it's, I honestly, I, I, like I said, I said earlier, I love learning. I just yeah. love it. So the fact that I have a group of students now who share their baking journey with me and we get to troubleshoot together, I, I have learned so much from their problems or their issues that have arisen or their mm -hmm. successes too. Um, because it, it just, it, teaches me a different way to look at it. And I only look at things from my perspective. So mm -hmm. when I get their perspective, it's like, I feel like I have been given the gift of like a thousand bakes more than my own. Oh, I love yeah. that. It's really cool. It's yeah, really yeah. Cool. That's yeah. really well said. And that's the power of community. Yeah. That's, you know, the whole basis oh. of Sourdough Mamas and Sourdough Mamas podcast and all that is community, bringing people together to support each other and love each other through the challenges. Yeah. And also encourage each other to, to step out of their comfort zone and try new things. And that's so. the beauty of like, of, of like technology. You and I were talking about technology issues when we first got on this call, yeah. trying to, <laughs> you know, make sure our, our cables are running and whatnot. And, uh, you know, sure there's frustrations with technology, but wow, like you, like I was, I said to my kids actually the other day, I was going to bake something. And I said, you know, you guys can just Google whatever you're going to get there. And you have at your fingertips access to recipes that um, when I was a kid, I would have had to call, you know, my grandma who would have had to call her friend Eunice, who would have had to have called mm -hmm. like somebody else to track down a recipe to get it to me. And it might've just died the recipe. It might've just fizzled out in somebody's recipe box or, you know, you know, the, when you open a piece of paper and you can no longer read it anymore, it's like, yes, the, the it's so faded. Like, or <laughs> Yeah. 
And so now like te technology is this crazy thing where we have the ability to share these food memories online. So it's pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. Yeah. We live in a yeah. pretty cool time. I got to say. We do. <laughs> we, there, we can complain. We can always find something to complain about, Boy, there's yeah. a lot of things to be grateful for. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what's the best way for listeners to find you? Um, well, you, Instagram is definitely our, our main platform. Um, I'm, I'm spend most of my time there and we try, try to provide some fun stuff for you guys to see all the time. So that is at just at sourdough schoolhouse. Um, our website is sourdoughschoolhouse.com. We do have, um, a, a whole bunch of baking gear that we sell through our, through our online store as well. So you can find us in all kinds of different ways. Um, and we do, like I said, monthly workshops that are lots of fun. If you want to just kind of give us a shot, try it out and go from there. That's awesome. Yeah. And I'll have the links to all this stuff down in the show notes. So it'll be on levenly.com slash podcast. You guys can find that there. Thank you so much, Shannon, for hopping on with me. Um, any final My thoughts? Pleasure. No, this is a lot of fun. I, I like, I love just the, how it's like two sourdough friends coming together. And um, I hope that you guys all learned a little bit or um, just feel more inspired to just be you when you're baking, like let, let your baking show you through it that's yeah it's always you're always making it with love so it should it should yeah absolutely good perfect final words thank you so much shannon this has been a blast awesome thank you